Some time ago, I was walking one of my coworkers through how to do custom training loops and weird loss functions in TensorFlow for models that have multiple outputs, each with their own mini neural net, but share the preceding body. These are called multi-head models. My coworker was only familiar with using the fit function, and so I made up a simple toy problem to quickly work through everything, and I'm going to show that same process in this video. Let's start off with the necessary imports. Note that we're using TensorFlow 2 here. Let's define an input layer where the shape would just be a vector of length one. Then we can define the shared part of the network, which I'm calling a backbone here. It's a dense layer of size four, which is already overkill for this problem, but whatever. We define each head with its own dense layer of size four, and then a final dense layer of size one for the output. Oops. I used the wrong namespace here. Okay, now we can define the structure of the model. Put the input through the backbone to get an intermediate representation. Put that through each of the heads to get the two outputs. We can then use the Keras model constructor to define the model fully with one input and two outputs. Uh, if I can just get my variable names right. Looking through a summary of the model, we see that it has 58 glorious parameters. That feels too little and too much at the same time, doesn't it? Training loop time. Let's get an optimizer ready. I'm gonna use Atom like 95% of the deep learning community and then get started on a training loop. I'm going to do a thousand iterations for now. And within the loop, we need this context manager to signal to TensorFlow that we want to track gradients. In the loop, let's grab a random input between zero and one, prepare the two outputs. One of course is just multiplied by two and the other one is divided by two and then run the model on the input to get predictions. Compute the losses. I'm using two different losses here just for the heck of it, just for demonstration. And then we can add the losses together to get a final loss. And I'll print it here in the training loop and in the future we'll regret that choice. Outside the context manager, we can compute the gradients using this tape variable and calling this gradient method on it. Tape keeps track of all the variables involved in the computation inside the context manager. And we need to pass both the loss output and the list of those variables to compute the loss. Finally, we can apply these gradients using the optimizer by passing it the variables as well as the gradients themselves. So I made two mistakes here. One was I spelled the function gradient, which is incorrect. And two, I forgot to zip the gradients and the washed variables together when passing them to the optimizer. Also three, printing the loss wasn't very useful, so let's store it in a list instead and plot. Nice, the loss decreases and starts to plateau. Let's do some ad hoc testing on the model. We see that it does a decent job. The first output gets pretty close to twice the input, and the second output is a bit less accurate. It could have something to do with us using a different loss for this output, I'm not quite sure. I didn't really investigate. So now we finally come to the original question that my colleague had, which was how to train only on one loss at a time. Once you have things set up the way I've shown here, that part becomes super easy. Just don't include that loss in the final loss. Here, I'm commenting out loss two and removing it from the final sum but this can be done using if statements and flags as well. You can have a lot of control once you've written out your training loop explicitly. This runs fine actually, but it produces a lot of warnings because some of the washed variables by gradient tape do not have a gradient. This warning is harmless, but it's pretty annoying and it can actually slow things down in certain cases just because of all the console spam that's being printed. We can get rid of it by changing the apply gradients function call and explicitly picking only those variables that actually have a gradient computed and now the errors go away. So we can go ahead and train with just loss one. We get a proper output for head one, but a random output for head two, that makes sense. We can then stop using loss one and only use loss two and continue training. And we see that the second output is starting to work well, but the first output has gotten a bit worse, which is to be expected because the weights of the backbone are starting to drift away from that problem. Alrighty, that is all I got for today. Hope this video was useful. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, and I'll see you next time. Bye.